Let's go. Let's go. I am fired up for today's show, okay? I need some energy because, look, we're going to mix in some hard truths about LSU football. We're also going to be positive because as LSU fans, we're always going to root on our Tigers. But I want you to know, if you by happen to be watching this stream for the first time ever, there's a lot of people in here that are smart, that are going to comment with some hard truths about LSU football. So if that's not your thing, if you're sunshine and rainbows, guess what? Uh, there's plenty of content out there for you that will suit your Go Tigers nature. So I want everyone to understand before we dive into LSU football and everything that's happening, understand that these are people's lives. And whenever a kid decides to transfer or a coach decides to move on or a coach decides to get fired, well, they're going to have to uproot their family's lives. So understand, anything I say tonight is not personal, okay? Nothing is personal, all right? Now, what's very interesting is that this week, We've had some of the most views we've ever gotten on the channel. We've gotten some of the best comments on the channel. And that's exactly what I want. I want good, healthy, serious LSU discussion while also having a good time. So, obviously, the first story, Bo Pelini fired. But we did a video on that already. And then I released the Scott Linehan news video. And while I push publish on that video... We get the word that Steve Insminger will not coach next year. Now, he could be an off-the-field analyst or a consultant, but he is stepping down from the play-calling duties, and that's a good thing. Not because he was a bad play-caller. In fact, it was quite the opposite. The main reason LSU had the success that they had is because of Steve Insminger's humility. And this was a guy who, by the way, was the offensive coordinator for the greatest offense of all time. But the one thing that people get wrong about Steve Insminger, or they don't mention enough, that's probably a better way to put it, Steve Insminger was on the sideline for the 2012 National Championship game. Now think about that. Wow. Okay. I did not expect that, Marcus. Our largest super chat ever. So we will get back to Steve Insminger. Wow. I did not expect this Christmas gift that early. Thank you so much, Marcus. As we welcome in Yusha, Kane, DC Vlogs, Tommy, Charlie, Nick, Max, but really, uh, this is, wow, I'm just kind of shook right now. A $200 Super Chat, Marcus, that really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, as we always say, um, <laughs> wow, I, I'm kind of just taken aback by that. That is really cool. I really appreciate you, Marcus. I really do. And I know you've been a friend of mine, and um, but honestly, we're not really friends. Like, we met through this channel. So for you to do that, for someone like me, you don't even, you've never met me, that really does mean a lot. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And Marcus said that, that goes towards Cliff, too, because Cliff's my actual uncle. I really do appreciate that. Um, and I was just thinking, like, for real, y'all are going to get to see Boog in a second. I know Eric I know Eric gets so mad if we don't get Boog on here. Boog will be on here in a second. But I, I, I have to order some more medicine for Booger tomorrow. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And Booger's doing fine. But thank you. I really do. Um, it's great. No, we're not going to get emotional. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm personally fine. I'm not going to get kicked out on rent. But I know a lot of people are right now. But it's just cool. It really, it really is helpful. But anyway, um, Marcus drops a $200 uh, super chat, and Aliyah Drinkowitz is like, uh, 
uh, a head coach. Why would he leave the Missouri job uh, to go be an offensive coordinator unless he's getting the head coaching job at LSU, which, you know, y- y- you look at Elijah Drinkowitz, he-, he was arguably the SEC coach of the year. So, um, so I don't think Drinkowitz would leave Missouri and what he's building there to go be uh, the new offensive coordinator. Um, Nielsen of the Saints is very interesting because a lot of you want the next Joe Brady. He seems to be the next Joe Brady, uh, according to what a lot of you have to say. I don't know a whole lot about Dunbar. In fact, I don't even know who that is. Uh, so if you guys can enlighten me, um, that would be great. Um, so... Wow, I'm still kind of like, wow, I didn't expect a $200 Super Chat. That means a lot. It really does. So I'm going to be done, thank you, because uh, I know Carvis is going to get pissed if I if I start getting sad. But I I'm I put my hand on the Bible. Uh, I, I legit gave Boog her last little Azadil. So thank you, Marcus, and that's going to definitely help out. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Devin says, some recent news broke that I think people might like to hear is our old friend Jorge Munoz who worked with Joe Brady Burrow is no longer on the Baylor staff with the Randa. I didn't see that. So uh, full disclosure, I just got off doing ESPN radio on the East coast. So I didn't get to prep as much before this live stream. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know that. So who would want Jorge Munoz as your offensive coordinator? Why not? Russ Calloway. How many of you are Russ Calloway fans? You know, one thing is Russ Calloway is a guy that, um, and Marcus, if you can, tell me a little bit more about Dunbar. I don't know a whole lot of, uh, about him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you want to know how much Munoz meant to the LSU staff, a, a good example of this is um, – is Munoz was flown out to New York for the high trophy. So apparently he meant something to Joe Burrow. So we welcome Mario Antonio. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Eric uh, on the East Coast. What's up, Rodney? You didn't miss much, man. Welcome in, dude. Lock on in. We're going to be in here for a little bit. So how many of you, okay, how many of you would like Russ Callaway um, as your offensive coordinator. Now, Marcus brings up a good point. The Pittsburgh Steelers defensive line coach formerly coached with the Alabama Crimson Tide. And as much as you hate Nick Saban, um, it's, it's true. I mean, a lot of you hate Nick Saban, but a lot of it, that a lot of you guys like is Charlie Strong. And the Pittsburgh defensive line coach, his name slips my mind too. He coached at Alabama. He's coached for the Jets. He's as well-traveled as you're going to see. Um, you know, here's the thing about Russ Calloway, and I, I want you to, to understand this. It's important whenever a player gives a quote, if the player lists something specific, Okay, and one thing I read a lot, whether it was Shea Dixon or whether uh, it was anyone, one name I just kept seeing was Russ Calloway. When Miles Brennan struggled against Mississippi State, Russ Calloway stepped in and taught him how to step up in the pocket. And then Max Johnson, we see that he and Russ Calloway have a good relationship. So something else about Russ Calloway you got to keep in mind is a lot of you like younger, hungry coaches. This is Russ Calloway's first big job. And no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you are always indebted to the person that gave you your first big opportunity. So for me, my first big opportunity personally in my career was Sirius XM. They took a chance on me as an intern. So I'm always indebted to them. And I gave them everything. If they were to ask me right now, hey, could you do a show for us right here and right now? I would probably just do it without even worried about what, what am I to get paid because they gave me my first opportunity and they opened the door for me. Um, the same is true here with Russ Calloway. His first real national opportunity is here. 
So you know, even though Russ doesn't really have heavy ties to Louisiana, this is a dream opportunity for him. So Eric makes a good point. How prepared is he for offensive coordinator duties? Well, you, you notice one of his quarterbacks is still in the NFL, Duck Hodges. And as a lot of you know, a lot of quarterbacks are ruined when they're in college because they don't get good coaching. So he's got a decent track record. And honestly, uh, you know, I, I the, the sources that I speak to in the building, the players rave about this guy. Is he Joe Brady? Probably not. That's once in a million type of coach. Um, but still, uh, it would be something I'm interested. So, movie says, if Coach O blows these hires, it's his job. I am not 100% sold that he's going to go with the complete first-timer. Interesting. The one thing about Russ Calloway, though, remember, Scott Woodward has gone on the record and said there is going to be a budget. Scott Calloway, whose family is already there in Baton Rouge, doesn't have this ridiculous long line of suitors that want him to call their plays. It'd be a very cost-effective move. So, especially if you're going to hire a defensive coordinator, for instance... Marcus Freeman is going to be wanted by a lot of people. He's probably going to be the hottest defensive coordinator name on the market. So you're going to have to pay this guy that Cincinnati would obviously like to keep on their staff a good bit to move his family to coach in a completely different conference. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, Jim Leonard is another guy that you have, have, have pointed it out. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Someone mentioned a, a, a very fascinating name to me. Uh, Jeff Grimes <laughs> had a lot of success when he was at LSU coaching the offensive line. Moved on to BYU. So let's discuss. So Marcus, thank you again for your super chat. I, I really did get emotional for a second. Um, it does mean a lot. So because... Uh, Marcus posted that. We'll keep the offensive coordinator chat going, and then we'll go to the defensive coordinator. Uh, Marcus says, I think there's enough of an opportunity for turnaround to try and attract guys who want to set themselves up for an NFL head co coordinator position. So, yeah, I mean, when you coach at LSU, it doesn't get much better than that, and you're put on a pedestal, and, you know, bigger opportunities come looking at you. Oh, Grant, shut up. Oh, my God. Grant's my classmate. Y'all leave him alone. Hey, I, I'm i happy. Let's see. A random moved from Wisconsin to Baton Rouge. I think others can and will if the money's right. But th th that that's essentially my point, is that you don't have the same budget as you once did. Cody, I, I've seen this movement. So Garrett Nussmeyer tweeted this out earlier, as did Mason Smith, the hashtag lead to LSU to try and get him to Baton Rouge. I, I stand by what I say. I don't tweet at recruits. Now, I will say there have been recruits that have messaged me, and I've messaged them back, and I've been friendly. I want recruits to come here and be great. Landon Jackson liked one of my tweets a few weeks ago, and I re I retweeted it. If I'm not tweeting something positive with the recruit's name, I'm just not going to do it. So, yeah, um, I, I, I don't want everyone to go to Twitter and start tweeting at recruits because that opens up Pandora's box. If Tristan Lee wants to come to LSU, I hope he comes to LSU not because of a hashtag movement on social media. Because there's too many times where we think that that's actually doing something uh, in all walks of life, when in actuality it's not. So if Tristan Lee wants to come, I'd love to have him because obviously he's an elite athlete and he can help us in year one. 
hear me out, Wade Phillips. No. And that, and honestly, the one thing about Wade Phillips, I actually think he would be a good defensive coordinator because he is just a really good play caller. What does he have to prove? Always answer that question. This guy is sitting on millions of dollars and has traveled the entire country. Do you think he wants to coach for LSU? No. Graham Harrell. You included the middle name, Noah. Jonathan keeps saying Jocko Willenick. Maybe for a motivational speech or David Goggins. Graham Harrell would be interesting, and obviously there there's some ties with Orgeron, USC, and whatnot, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Kate said, let the youngsters recruit the youngsters. Don't participate in that. You're a grown man. This is a child. <laughs> uh, Gus Malzahn would not be a good fit, uh, simply because I don't think he, he and Orgeron um, coincide philosophically. Brett Favre for offensive coordinator, that would be another horrible decision. Brett Favre is getting paid quite a bit by the company I was just talking to. About just a minute ago, Sirius XM, Brett Favre probably has more sponsorship deals more than any other retired quarterback. He's getting fat checks from Wrangler and Copperfit. And remember, Brett Favre, when it comes to play design, is not a play design quarterback. He was a slinger, okay? He was... It's essentially Aaron Rodgers. He extended plays and just chunked balls into coverage. Do you think Brett Favre coming in would be like, hey, um, Miles, run around, chunk it as far as you can. We're both from Mississippi. It's going to work. <laughs> um, Gus Malzahn is a terrible offensive mind. I don't know what Auburn was thinking. No, Gus Malzahn's a brilliant offensive mind. Brilliant. He brought the Wildcat offense, which worked for a while. And, you know, he, Gus Malzahn was a big reason why the Darren McFadden thing happened. Gus Malzahn is a big reason why Auburn won a national championship and went to another national championship game. We can't sit here and say, well, uh, Gus Malzahn is 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 great. But then follow up with saying, well, LSU's only won a certain amount of national championships. There's only a handful of coaches that have gone to multiple national championship games. And Gus Malzahn's one of them. Okay? Once as a head coach, once as an OC. Butch Jones for what? Butch Jones is gone. He he's got a head coaching job. He's got a good one at that at Arkansas State. Jack Hunt? I, I just want to know what Jack Hunt is doing right now. I'm very interested. Does Napier have any offensive coordinator experience? Billy Napier is not going anywhere unless he's a head coach. Bottom line. There's a reason why he's the only Sun Belt coach that makes over a million a year. Because he's that good of a coach. So, Big Mac, let's rephrase your question. And, and, Marcus has brought this up before as well, and I'm not just saying that because of the Super Chat, but notice the wordage you're using. Do you think that there's a coordinator in the NFL that is on his way out and LSU can get? So essentially, who is an NFL defensive coordinator who is out that we could bring to the college game, which is completely different, you see, I, I just don't like that logic. I want someone on the ascend instead of the descend. I want to remember. You, you know, we were talking about being indebted. Well, when Dave Aranda was hired, we gave um, we we gave a huge, huge amount of money to Dave Aranda eventually, right? So, Dave Aranda, if you remember, LSU. Allow, I think the story was Gary DiNardo allowed Dave Aranda to sleep on his couch when he was had no money and was traveling from coaching clinic to coaching clinic. And LSU took Dave Aranda to the next level. 
So Dave Aranda gave us his all, gave us his all, and he was excellent. First two years, he was impeccable. His third year, he was good. His last year wasn't as good as the other years, but it was still pretty good. What happened at Baylor? Well, this was always known that, um, and this is how I felt too. I I don't think Dave Veranda's head coaching material though, and the reason why is because well, when you go from LSU making two plus million dollars a year to not meet with the media, not have to BS, not have to make the public appearances, not have to meet with boosters, that's obviously not as prevalent at Baylor as it is with. Uh, LSU, but it's still a thing. When you're used to not having to worry about that and all you'd have to worry about is coaching instead of recruiting, that really caught up to Dave Miranda. And I I think that was a a big reason why Baylor wasn't any good. And they were returning a quarterback who took them to the Big 12 championship game the year before. If we had Aranda this year, we'd be 8-2 and or 7-3. and not eight and two, but seven and three more than likely. I could see that. I could. I could easily see that. Because look, uh, and I and you know I appreciate Marcus in the super chat, but we were having this discussion in the comment section, and I want to bring it up now, and I'm going to do so on his behalf because he was making the case to bring Bo Pelini back. So I want an honest uh, discussion here. Um, do you believe Bo Pelini should have been brought back? Dead serious, okay? Bo Pelini brought back. Do you did you want Bo Pelini to get another year? Because I was kind of shocked that a lot of you wanted him to come back. You see, Marcus says yes. He might be on an island on this one. Max, you say yes and no. No, 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 no. Devin said no. Devin said no from the rooftops. And Carvis. So I, I've shouted out Carvis plenty of times. It's one of our more thoughtful commenters. So he said yes. Movie says yes. Coach Smith, who is obviously a coach, Coach Smith. Every high school has a Coach Smith, by the way. Every single one. He said, first year, give him an extra chance. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, any 1045 cross 1045? Is that is that code for defensive coordinators? Uh, do we need young minds that old? Uh, depends on how much money is left to pay all the new guys. And That's a good point. Eric, is that Cherie? A 104.5. No, I don't I don't know what you're asking, Greg, but welcome, Greg. Good to see you, man. Marcus won assistant coach of the year award. That's and that's the thing. He's he's gonna be the defense coordinator everyone's gonna want. I I uh I I that tends to be the case over over time. Okay, ESPN Radio. Shout out to all my friends. I I think I know everyone that has a show there. Shout out to Scone and everybody. T Bob. T Bob's a, a good buddy of mine. Yes, he was historically bad. So I'm I'm going to share why I think Bo Pelini didn't deserve another um another year. But first, we are at 164 people, which is ridiculous on a Tuesday night. You guys are watching me instead of Kevin Durant and Steph Curry instead of Zach Wilson. I appreciate you. I really do. So if you can, hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. If you're new, uh, Greg, if you're from 104.5, please hit the subscribe button and keep supporting my dude, T-Bob. That dude grinded to get that, that position. I remember what I used to do. Uh, I used to do a podcast with T-Bob, and I used to do uh, a weekly segment when he was on an AM station in New Orleans, and that actually continued when he moved over to WWL. So keep supporting the the T-Bob. Jordan Jefferson for QB coach. We're getting really creative. (laughs) What's up, Mario? Go Tigers indeed. 
Kane, you're a Nets fan? Oh, my goodness. The opener? I actually am a, a Durant guy. Durant's starting to lose his hair, so it's going to get real this year. Zach Mettenberger for QB coach? I like old Matt. Matt's a dude, man. Uh, let's see. Michael says he doesn't even want O back. And this is Michael B. Jordan. Killmonger's in the chat tonight. Only the real ones know who Killmonger is. Shout out to you, my man. So, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't let Jordan Jefferson be in charge of wheeling out the footballs. You know, it's, Jordan Jefferson was actually a really interesting guy. I really enjoyed my conversations with him. And it's interesting that each Jefferson after him got better and better. And obviously, you know, his younger brother was a great safety at LSU. Very underrated safety. I know he gets caught up in the DBU stuff. Uh, but all the other legendary safeties like Jamal and Eric and those guys. Um, and then obviously Justin's one of the best players that ever played at the school. Uh, so, yeah, if Robert Kraft believes in him, I'll give him a shot. I met Robert Kraft at the famous 9-6 game, and it is so weird to meet a billionaire, okay? It is so weird because they are different human beings than the rest of us. Billionaires can't live like us because they know they can just buy everyone in the building. They, they can buy the school right then and there. Yeah, oh, of course. He should win off, off its... Uh, rookie of the year, not no stupid Justin Herbert. No one cares about Justin Herbert. Matt Patricia for DC. That is, and TPVN, you know I love you. So I wouldn't be saying this if this was a new commenter, but Matt Patricia is the worst, the absolute worst. How could you trust someone that hasn't shaved and still has a pencil in his ear? What? Really? This is football, not World of Warcraft. Come on. Please. What's up, Larry? Yeah, this channel's on fire, baby. On fire! On fire! So, anyway, my thoughts on Bo Pelini. So, I will say this, okay? And if I can, just brag on myself. I always stuck with my initial opinion. And then I turned myself into being optimistic about Bo Pelini because I'm an LSU fan. I was getting caught up in the moment. But when Bo Pelini's name was floated out for the job, I hated it. I did a YouTube video about it. Hated it. Hated it. So my bias would say, go along with that. You, you'd never liked it from the get-go. But there's also a piece of me that says, well, you need to give a guy more than one year. But here are my thoughts on Bo Pelini. We gave up seven plus yards per play in eight of our 10 games. Now, I know, Marcus, you don't like the stat. Some people don't like the stat. I love that stat because that doesn't allow the time constraints of a game to affect that stat. How good are you on a play by play basis? Last year, we gave up seven plus yards per play only twice, only twice, okay? Our worst yard per play games were on the road, which makes sense, okay? So the bottom line remains the same. Bo Pelini gave up too many yards and gave up too many points. And the ultimate thing that hurt me Watching LSU, okay? I know this from interviewing some of the guys that played on our legendary defenses, like Patrick Peterson. I have mentioned that before. I interviewed him a ton while we were in college. You know, they take so much pride. Devin White takes so much pride. I just didn't see a prideful bunch out there. I didn't see a unit that wanted to fix our problems. And a good example of this was the Ole Miss game. So there was a touchdown on third down that Matt Corral threw to a wide-open guy in the back of the end zone. 
It was a coverage bust. Dwight McLaughlin just let the guy run. Mo Hampton didn't go with them. Whose job is it? I don't know. But what happened that bothered me was after the guy caught the touchdown wide open in the back of the end zone, none of the defensive backs said anything to anyone. They didn't say whose guy was that. What are we supposed to do? Which means they have given up on the scheme. They have given up on the uh, the the communication part of it. Jacoby, Mo, Demon, and Flot gave everything that needed from the coach to not be that bad. I was happy to see the team fight hard to the end of the season, though. Yeah, and I'm not saying that they didn't play hard. Our guys kept playing hard. I don't think that they. The the only time where I thought LSU kind of threw in the towel was Auburn. But since then, I, I thought the guys always did play hard. I really do. Nevertheless, we gave up way too many easy touchdowns, so way too many easy yards down the field. And when you do that, it gets caught in your mind that this is okay. It is okay that there's the occasional coverage bust. It's the... I mean, there were so many plays where it was like that, where we gave up touchdowns and huge plays where we were not even touching the ball carrier. So that's the problem. It's a huge problem. I, I've heard Chris Richard's name thrown around quite a bit. Oh, yeah, Kane. That's so cool. Jonathan's sending you a flask. That's great. So Mikey wants to know some candidates. So obviously, let me ask you this. How many of you, and, I, and, and here's what I want you to do, okay? And this is really hard to do because we love our LSU Tigers. And I'm about to say a defensive coordinator name that a lot of you like, okay? This is a name that I get the most, all right? I get Marcus Freeman out at Cincinnati. I hope he gets an interview. That would be a very historic hire for LSU on multiple fronts, as would Corey Raymond. Ne either one of them would be the first ever black play caller at LSU. Now, I'm not someone that believes in moral licensing, okay? I just don't believe in it. I do believe first like that are important, though. I just don't believe you should hire someone just because of who they may be, what they may represent, or anything like that. But both of them are obviously very qualified, if not overqualified, for the job. So let me ask you this. Corey Raymond is probably the most beloved coach now that Steve Ensminger is no longer with LSU. And now that Steve Ensminger is not there, I would guess Corey Raymond is the longest tenured coach. So. Which, how many of you believe Corey Raymond should be the defense coordinator? I, I get that a lot. Okay. How many of you would believe that, um, that Corey Raymond should be the defensive coordinator at LSU? How many? Because I, I get it all the time. Corey Raymond, Corey Raymond, Corey Raymond. So, Kane, the reason why they practice separately is because the coaches, they had two different coaches. They had the safeties coach and a corners coach. Some coaches do that. That's just what they do. So that's why they, 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 um, Kareem said, I should coach. If LSU wants to call me, hit me up. I'd, I'd be happy to help him out. I, I, I'm not saying that I know more than any one of them. They know way more about football than I do. But if my Tigers called me to, to play or coach, I'm going to go run through a wall for Coach Orgeron and my Tigers. LSU means the world to me. It's the reason why I went there. Yeah, and Springer was moved to the analyst, or he might just hang it up altogether. It wouldn't, it, no matter what, it, it, it wouldn't shock me. So, yeah. Mike Dettelier just said, what? Let me read this. Mike's obviously more plugged in than me. Looking at Ryan Nielsen, defensive line coach of the Saints, and Bo Davis, Detroit Lions, defensive line coach. 
That'd be interesting. <laughs> Spring cleaning is one way to put it. Oh, Cliff, that's funny. So here's why I say no to Corey Raymond, okay? Obviously, like I said, it'd be a pretty historic thing, okay? You know, going from position caller to actually calling the shots is, is a huge difference. The reason why you don't want Corey Raymond to be the defensive coordinator is it's exactly what Marcus has said and 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 what has some people said, okay? He is so important to you as a defensive backs coach. And here's a good example of this. So LSU is a brand school. We have a brand, all right? And the strongest national brand that we have right now is, is what? It, it's obviously national champions of 2019, but that brand is new. Okay, Eric Gilbert came to our school because of what our brand was last year. But the brand that has transcended years now is our defensive backfield brand. And the reason why DBU is DBU is because of two people, Patrick Peterson and Corey Raymond. Those are the two main reasons. Okay, Peterson started the swag movement. He changed everything at LSU. And I can say that because I, I was I was there. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't great defensive backs before him. But the DBU attitude changed when Patrick Peterson came, and Corey Raymond was a big reason why as well. Okay? So, Corey Raymond, okay? You know, we got caught up so much in offensive line recruiting and Mason Smith and, and all of that. Well, did you notice something that was, that was weird about the recruiting? It's... Weird that we lost Nathaniel Wiggins on signing day. LSU just lost him. But how many schools could lose a corner on signing day and just get another top 15 corner to decommit and come to LSU? How many coaches could do that? How many programs could do that? Not many. And the only reason LSU was able to do that is because of DBU, because of Corey Raymond. So if you move him to a position to call plays, that is something that is honestly completely different than what he's doing right now. Completely different. It requires a completely different skill set. Now, there's different rumors and reports out there that Corey Raymond wants to call plays. I've heard it from some sources in the building that he wants to be a defensive coordinator. And then there's... Some of you that tell me, well, he just wants to uh, stay where he is. So what, 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 which one is it? We don't know. But if you wanted Corey Raymond to potentially be the defensive coordinator, what you would have had to do is allow him to call the plays for the Ole Miss game or the Florida game or anything like that to see if he could actually do it. So, yes, it would be very convenient for LSU to just say, look, Corey Raymond, take a small bump in your salary. This is your opportunity to run the show. He may be good at it. We don't know. So, it's tough. Because personally, I like him a lot. I like him a whole lot, and he is a huge reason why we've gone to national championship games and won SEC championships and had the success we've had. There's a reason why when, when different coaches go out the door, he stays around. Now, obviously, a lot of that has to do with him having the best corners at his disposal, Trey White, Tyron, those guys. It's a big deal. But you could essentially be hurting your program for the long term if you want him to be the defensive coordinator that's why I say take away your emotion because it doesn't make sense okay Carter you know I love your name but quit spamming the chat with the, the Zach Mettenberger thing alright 
I don't know why you want that so bad for him to be the quarterback coach. Uh, I, I think he's coaching in high school or middle school, so hopefully that answers your question. But as Jonathan said, if you drop a super chat or if you Venmo or cash at me, guess what? I will happily spend as much time as you want on Zach Mettenberger and his great career at LSU. So there you go. And Jesse, I know, and I think you're just joining us, Jesse. So that's that's the danger in making Corey Raymond your defensive coordinator. Now, that's not a shot at him at being the defensive coordinator. That's me pointing out that he is so good at what he does. There's a reason why everyone considers him the best defensive back coach in the country, and that's pretty universal. Look at his track record. So, you know... Uh, He's Ed Orgeron's most important assistant. Probably. Definitely other position coaches. No doubt about it. Okay. So let's bring up another name. All right. Charlie Strong, who is currently a defensive analyst at Alabama. How many of you want Charlie Strong? All right. Uh, Mark. Spears for a D-line coach. Well, you know what's funny? That would actually be a, a decrease in his pay at what ESPN's given him now. So uh, that's not going to happen. Exactly, Tony. If you were going to do this, if you were, if they were seriously considering Corey Raymond as defensive coordinator, it is irresponsible to not hand him the clipboard for some of the games. All right, let's go to Marcus Freeman. Thank you, Hit Stick, for your super chat. I appreciate that. Let's see. So, Marcus Freeman. Okay, I haven't sat down and watched a lot of Cincinnati football. So, he is, obviously, his head coach is Luke Fickle, who's probably the coach of the year in college football. I would give it to him or the Indiana coach. Uh, Tom Allen, isn't that his name? Uh, those have been the two most well-coached teams, obviously outside of Clemson and Alabama, who are the best coached teams every year. They just also happen to have the best talent. Um, Sam Pittman, Eli Drinkowitz, Lane Kiffin, all those guys deserve real uh, recollection. Um, so let's go to um, Marcus Freeman. So because Hit Stick dropped the super chat, we'll go from Charlie uh, – to Marcus and Jonathan, you're right about Tommy Moffat, man. Thanks for your sticker. Um, Tommy Moffat's unbelievable. I did a whole video about uh, Tommy Moffat before the year. If you're interested in learning about the technology that Tommy Moffat's implemented, um, you can watch that video. It, it was right before the, the year began. Moffat's a beast. I've met him a few times. High-energy guy. His son, who was on the team, graduated. So, you know, Tommy's a big part of this program. So, uh, Jesse, that's a good question. So Marcus Freeman is someone that I'm really high on too. Cincinnati did a lot of innovative things defensively. Uh, they'll line up in three-man front, line up in amoeba front, line up in a five-man front. They'll do so many different things. Now, I haven't sat down and studied them or watched them. Quite frankly, I haven't had time to really study Marcus Freeman. But you do get a few things with them. Number one, you get a dude that's played in the NFL. Huge for recruiting. Number you have historic first, obviously, and that's huge for, obviously, people like me that want to see black coaches get huge opportunities such as this. Uh, that's not the main reason why I would want him, like I just stated a few minutes ago, but, you know, that does play a role. Number three, obviously, coaching with, with Fickle, who's one of the best defensive minds and one of the best head coaches in all of college football this year, he's got a lot of positive momentum. So you get a former NFLer, you get a guy who's coached with an innovator, and most importantly, you get the opposite of Bo Pelini. You get a young up-and-comer who's willing to change and can relate with players, who's probably far more player-friendly, who's probably a lot better at making in-game adjustments because it's hard not to be better than Bo Pelini at making in-game adjustments. So, yeah, I, I think um, – I think Marcus Freeman would be someone that at least deserves an interview. I think Brad White at Kentucky is someone that's in the conference, very familiar with the conference. Not a 
big flashy name, but think about Kentucky and the three stars that they've had on defense, the consistency that they've had on defense, and Kentucky every year, you know defensively they're going to be really good. How many big-time draft picks have Kentucky had on defense? One, and it was a pass rusher who was really good. Uh, what's his name? Josh Allen? Isn't that his name? Is it Josh? I don't remember. Uh, he plays for the Jaguars now. So, you know, Brad White's another name that I'm very interested in. Then, you know, Derek Mason is a name that's been floated out there. I would prefer Charlie Strong over Derek Mason. You know, Charlie Strong's best defensive performance ever actually came in Tiger Stadium. Tim Tebow was coming off of uh, a concussion during his post-Heisman run, and they shut us down. The final score was 13-3. to I remember that game. And Charlie just just tore us apart. I remember Brandon Spikes was on that defense. So this is a guy that's been under Saban, hungry for another opportunity. I'd, I'd be a little bit more willing to, to take Charlie Strong after uh, a, a year with Bama. And Charlie Strong, his biggest win as a coach, came in the Superdome with Louisville over Florida. So uh, I'd be very interested. Uh, let's see. What did Velvet say? Uh, let's see. What about Bo Davis's defensive coordinator? Be interesting. Oh, it's booger time. What's up, S Velvet? We got a few velvets in here. Let's see if we can get a booger. All right. We are getting booger prepared for her live stream appearance. That is especially for Eric. Glenn Schumann, the assistant at Georgia. Don't know a whole lot about him. Obviously, if you coach a Kirby Smart, you know defense. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. So, people want Bug. Uh, Bugger's coming. Uh, uh, give, give her time. She's got to prepare. We got dog people in here. That's my kind of people instead of cat people. Who could be a cat person? <laughs> 203 people in here and only 76 have hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button. Tell a friend to come hang out. I know it's different. We're all hanging out on a Tuesday night, just having a good time, chatting ball. So I'm interested. Um, what what are uh, amoeba front? I like a good amoeba front. Orgeron, if or, Orgeron's not going to hire Mike Bobo, if he wants, do not hire Mike Bobo, please. Did you? And I, I had to talk about Mike Bobo for three hours today after what happened at South Carolina. You ever going to go on the Companion Show? I, I don't know. Uh, what is the Companion Show? Booger is coming. Okay, everybody wants to see Bug the Dog. No, okay, you're the one that's at the 104.5 uh, with T-Bob, companion show, and Emil. Emil is a friend of mine in college. I saw Emil um, in Baton Rouge at Ivar's after the national championship game. It was actually a few days after. I love that guy. I mean, he was just he's just so freaking funny. Yeah, Emil's great. Mincy's a good friend of mine as well, as is Playboy Marty. They they do a great job. They're just super funny. Um, but yeah, we say hi to Jonathan. Tony, what up, Tony? What has Elko done to impress you? Other than that stupid tweet where he was calling out the ESPN analyst. Here's the thing, all right? And I, I'm debating on whether or not I want to do a video on this, but... And Tony, we'll, we'll get to the food in a second. MB, what a do. MB, you had a take that bothered me so much, and I'm not going to bring it up on here, MB, because I don't know you that well. Okay, if it was Tony that had this take, or Marcus, I would destroy them on this live stream. Greg, what year did you graduate, man? I, I think you and I were at LSU the same time then. Um. MB, I was shocked that you commented what you commented the other day. <laughs> Ooh, Jonathan, super chatting $2 bills. Let's go. 
Marcus, that two hundred dollars still looks good, baby. Let's go. I I would like that hit stick. I would really like that. Speak to people about Christian Lacatour, and they you won't hear a negative thing about him. I've interviewed Lacatour a lot. He was a good player too. Did his job. Former number eighteen who actually lived up to the jersey number and, and played well. Um, Lacatour is a big reason why we got Mason Smith. So. I, I'm down with it. Young up and comer owes basically everything to LSU. I'm all about it. Shout out to Christian Like a Tour. Should get him on the live stream. Yeah. So I would like it. But you know what? Something that's fascinating to me Mike Bobo would be awful. What's up, Black Goatee? Coming on in. What do you think about Derek Mason for D.C.? All right, we just talked about him. I like Derek Mason. Hasn't been at D.C. since 2012. I, for SEC coaches, coaches currently in the SEC, I would put Brad White and, and Charlie Strong on a pedestal over Will Muschamp, over Jeremy Pruitt. I just don't want a guy that just got handed – a fat check just to leave where he was coaching to come coach at LSU. I want someone that's hungry and ready to for their big time to shine. And that actually holds true for Brad White. And in a sense, Charlie Strong, because he's been an analyst. Charlie wants to actually be a coach again. So Hugh Freeze as offensive coordinator. So obviously... Auburn contacted him today about the head coaching job. It obviously didn't work out. They're deciding to go with Brian Harson. Not uh, here's the thing about Hugh Freeze. Okay, what he got caught doing at Auburn was was bad. Do you think you want Hugh Freeze in Baton Rouge, Cougar capital of the world? Just no. I, I don't, I'm not so sure about that. And, 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 you know, there's something about it. Okay, let's go to Bugger. Here we go. Okay, this is... She just woke up. She was sleeping. She was sleeping. All right, everyone, say hi to Bugger. She wants to go back to sleep. Look at her. Look at her. Everyone say hi. Look, look everyone, gets, everyone gets all lit up for Bugger. We got a $200 super chat from Marcus. Oh, wow, that's so nice. Bugger, you got your assies coming. Oh, baby. Look, somebody just said something right there. Uh, that's Cliff right there. Uncle Cliff. I can't see that far. Edo talked to Joe Brady and he recommended DJ Mangus. That sounds like a, a a DJ you would see on the backstage of Coachella. DJ Mangus. Eric. Look at that. All right, bud. Go on and go back to sleep. Come here, baby. Come, baby girl. I don't know she's yeah, mad. she's mad. She doesn't. She she got woken up just for you guys, just to entertain you, Leandria and Debbie. I'm telling you, the one time Booger didn't make a live chat appearance, I got uh, it was crazy. Now Booger's got fans. She's gonna start her own YouTube channel and get thousands of dollars in super chats. Should we elevate? Rust to passing game coordinator. Well, the question here, hit stick, is should we? And and one thing, Cliff, tell me about DJ Mangus. I don't know a whole lot about DJ Mangus. I don't. Once again, this is the hardest thing about coordinator searches. Whenever you bring up a name that I don't know, you know way more about that person than I do. Okay, it is so hard to keep up with all these names. It really is. I don't know anything about Coachella. Wait, what is it? You have to give Hugh Freeze an ankle break. <laughs> That's so true. And that's the thing. You know, when you're at Liberty, you need to add bug into your title design. Well, you know what's funny? Uh, my girl, One of my girlfriend's really good friends does did the Power Hour LSU grant. So we'll, we'll see. We'll do a bugger design. Why not? Bug wears number seven. Oh, so DJ sat right next to Brady in the booth. Okay. So, yeah, I, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about him. That's one thing. I'm never just going to fake it in front of you guys. So I'd be interested. Yeah. Tell me more. 
No team issued phones for Coach Freeze. Yes. No paper trail. No. But here's the thing. Hugh Freeze is really good. You, you cannot deny that this guy is really freaking good at coaching football. He just is. But that's the funny thing, Kevin. Hugh Freeze failed for non-football reasons, okay? And the funniest thing, the funniest Hugh Freeze story was when, what was his offense? Laramie Tunsil, okay, y'all remember? So Laramie Tunsil, <laughs> this is what makes college football so great. So Laramie Tunsil, the night of the draft, had that gas mask leak, okay? And that took all the headlines away. But people forget, Laramie Tunsil admitted to an NCAA violation at the NFL draft press conference that he, I think he said something along the lines of him getting paid and freaking Hugh Freeze was in the, the, the audience. He was at the press conference. So that was the absolute worst press conference to say that when your coach is sitting right there implicating you on violations. Ugh. He was studying chemistry that night. You see, Eric? That's what I said. It's just a gas mask. There's no telling what he was actually doing with the gas mask. But I agree with you, Kevin. Let's not hire a failed recycle coach. But then again, Hugh Freeze hasn't really failed anywhere he's been. I know. Think about all the teams that passed on Lyle Collins. And you just sat there on draft and on. That was the Lyle Collins thing is still the craziest thing to me that he turned out to be an NFL starter. Do you know how hard it is to get an NFL starter on the offensive line in, in any round? Unless you're a robber. He was getting ha ha ha. That is good. That is so good. So um, there you go. So we we we've listed out some names. If you were to ask me what I think the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator situation is going to look like, I think Russ Callaway will be a bigger part of the offense next year. I don't think anyone who thinks otherwise, unless he gets a, a big job. So, I would not be opposed of, of handing the keys to the offense to Russ Calloway. I just wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, especially if that is money you could spend on your defensive staff. Remember, you're only replacing Innsminger, okay? On the defensive staff, if you're wanting to do a complete overhaul, the problem with hiring Corey Raymond from within is that you would have to elevate him, and then Raymond would have to replace someone at defensive backs coach who's better than him, which, or as good as him, which is highly unlikely. And he would have to hire a complete that a big problem for LSU. Coaches are going to work themselves out. I, I've read this. Someone told me this earlier that's in the know that a big problem for LSU's offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator search is they don't know who their exact position groups are going to be. So arguably, if you hire a, a defensive coordinator, is your defensive co coordinator also going to be the linebackers coach? or the? It becomes a mess. So it's interesting. Chad Kelly for head coach. Why not? I need Freeze versus a lane train. I wouldn't mind that, but just not at my school. <laughs> what about Orgeron's previous HC who used to be the hey, OC? Trey. <laughs> That's funny, Andrew. I need Jorge or DJ, but Russ in the future. Good question by you, Bengal. Do you think we get Brian Thomas Jr.? 
Well, the door's open. Uh, I don't, I, I, even though LSU's happy with their wide receiver class, especially after losing JoJo, I don't think LSU's in a position where they could say no to Brian Thomas Jr., even though they're still saving a slot for Savian Jones. Now, there's some rumors that the offensive lineman that was committed to Auburn is now going to flip to LSU. He's also a grad transfer from Harvard, so obviously you have the Liam Shanahan situation. So that looks as if that's going to happen for LSU. Um, his name slips my mind. I read about him earlier. The offensive lineman from Harvard that is flipping from Auburn to LSU. Let's hope that happens. How about Jimmy Burrow? I think he's fine staying in Ohio where his son is playing NFL games. Trust me, it is hard to take a dad away from getting to watch his son playing every weekend. You know, he made that sacrifice in college. I don't think his dad wants to miss an NFL game either. Yeah, Kimo, I, I've read about him too. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I think he's a three-star guard. Eric Wilson is a grad transfer. Thank you, Ken, for that. I appreciate that. Uh, but Brian Thomas Jr. is a guy that I don't think you can you could pass on. I really don't think you can pass on him. Um, some people have compared him to Terrace Marshall. You ask yourself this question. Do you want an in-state Terrace Marshall to go to Texas A&M? No. You want him to, to play for LSU. And I, I hear that comparison all the time with BTJ is he's the next Terrace Marshall. I'll tell you this, he's he's a quiet guy like Terrace Marshall. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Trunk hit hard like Kimbo Slice. I know Michael B. JoJo was my favorite player in this class. So yeah. That's a weird tax. That's fine. Yeah, I could see that, Marcus. Let's see. Okay, guys, we're an hour into this. And if you're new to the if you're new to the channel, we do this all the time. I like to see how Tiger Nation has grown. Um, some of you, I know where you're watching from, but I, I would like for you to shout it out again. I know Ulysses is in Denver, Kane is in PA, Tony's in Tennessee, Jonathan's in North Carolina. But shout out your hood right now. Let's go. Who are you repping right now? Who are you repping right now? Let's go. Trunk hid hard like Kimbo Slice. Greg, you're in Austin. What's up, man? North Carolina. Houston, Charleston, GA. Wait, is that Carl? No, that's not Carl the Cat. Baton Rouge. Mobile. Tennessee, AZ, the DMV. What's good? Vegas. The 281, what's good? Corpus Christi. The 504, Jigga Man, what's good, baby? On a place on the corner of Bennett Street? Look at you, Marcus, going big time. Elias Karam, North Shore, Louisiana. George, oh, AMAC, what do you do for a living, man? That's cool. Bl uh, 75 Black Leo in Vegas as well. Corpus Christi, St. Amant. Wait, Evan, where'd you say? Wait, you're in Ventura County, California? You know what's interesting? Every one of my friends that went to LSU that moved to California, they always move back to Louisiana. They always do, like within five years. So do you want to come back? I'm very curious. I, I was just talking to my girlfriend about this. Philly's in the building. What's up, Joshua? Phoenix. Geico. Oh. Hey, Mac. I like that, man. Tell the lizard to sponsor my channel, okay? If not, I am moving on to flow from Progressive or the new Jake from State Farm. They moved from old Jake from State Farm to uh, 
my dude, the new Jake from State Farm. Okay? Tell the Geico or the caveman to sponsor my channel. Okay? Wait, it is Call the Cat? Call the Cat is here. You've never missed an LSU baseball game or football. Call the Cat is in the building. LSU's true number one fan. I love it. So welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let's hang out. I mean, come on. Fire those super chats. Fire those, fire those cash apps. Fire those. Venmos, what would you guys like to talk about? Florida fans say LSU should hire Todd Grantham. No thanks. Oh, oh, no thanks. In a must-win game, he allowed a true freshman to light him up. I am perfectly fine. Florida, did you read that today, Devin? That's crazy. Oh, did I say it right, Elias? You had the same... Elias, what is it like to have the same name of the best cornerback at LSU? Did y'all see that today? And I did a video about it earlier. You know, I love Derek Singley Jr., but Elias Ricks not being first team all SEC, like Marcus said, like Cliff said, is the same thing that happened last year with Grant Delpit. And it fires me up. Honor the players that actually deserve it. Grant Delpit should have won the Thorpe as a sophomore, not as a junior. Same thing here with Derek Singley. He should have won the Thorpe last year. He shouldn't be first-team All-SEC this year. Oh, I know, Jonathan. You, you better come for Marcus. Marcus is the G. It is a true honor, Elias. I love Eli Ricks, man. It's one of my favorite recruits ever. You know, you could just see, you could, you could look into someone's eye and see if they're a dog. And Eli, uh, Elias Ricks is just a different human being. He, he, uh, some elite athletes have it. They have a, they have a certain mindset that you just cannot crack. And he is one of those guys. He's just a different human being than you or I. And to go along with great athleticism, you know, it, it gives me chills. It's crazy that this dude is going to be with us for at least two more years. I know, Marcus. You know what's funny? I feel like I'm sleeping on Chris Hilton. I feel like I'm sleeping on him, and I hate to use that phrase because everyone always says, you're sleeping on me. Or everyone's just sleeping on Texas A&M or whoever. I feel like I've not talked about Chris Hilton enough, and I know he's had some injury issues. But we'll see. I know, man. I, something about Ricks. And I know it's not like a, a crazy call that you're going to say a five star is great. But, man, uh, every time I could talk about that dude before the season, I was like, he just looks different. Now, I didn't think he'd be this fucking good. I, I, and I missed on some players, too. But I just did not think he'd be this good. I really didn't. Now, like, he was transcendently good. And I, I would go so far to say he had a better freshman year than Stingley had the year before. Obviously, 10 games versus 15 games, things were different. I get it. But, man, he's good. He's freaking good. You know, I, I would like to go see the, 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 the turquoise turf. Jonathan, that record's going to be tough. Markets with the $200, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. And uh, Tony and Ken, your cards will be shipped out tomorrow. So uh, it should be shipped out tomorrow. Do I think Ali Gay stays? Um, oh, Marcus, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Ali Gay, do I think Ali Gay stays? Um, Obviously, he's got traits that NFL Teams drool over. Long arms, great athlete, good speed. I think he needs another year. Remember, okay? You know who else had athletic traits who left the year way too early? And he had some great games and another other games he was meh? We just talked about him. Anthony Freak Johnson. Ruined. That was a guy that ruined his career. 
by leaving a year too early. Ruined it. Ruined it. Ali Gay's not ready. He needs to come back. Now, that doesn't mean he can't be a great NFL player. Because it's interesting. Um, a, a good example, uh, you know, I really do think, and this is an untold story that we don't talk enough about, how many of you thought, and I want you to be honest, okay, we're an hour into this, how many of you thought um, Glenn Dorsey was going to be an all-time NFL great? How many of you thought Glenn Dorsey was going to be a monster in the NFL? Okay. I thought Glenn Dorsey was going to be ridiculous. And I got a funny Glenn Dorsey story I heard one day. Every single one of us, outside of maybe some of you, uh, Market says Glenn was system dependent. I actually agree with that to a certain degree. Glenn Dorsey was a 4-3 defensive tackle, a 4-3-3 technique. And he played alongside Kirsten Pittman and Ricky Dream Francois and Marlon Favorite, some really good players. I think Glenn Dorsey, when he came back, put a lot on the line. And I think that cheap shot he had against Auburn, and a lot of you remember this, he got cut right on the kneecap. It was dirty. They, in fact, put a rule into where you can't do it anymore. You can't cut block someone while they're engaged with somebody else. He wasn't the same player. He wasn't the, the, uh, the, the same player at all. So, you know, I, that was a case where Glenn Dorsey was right to, because we had a national championship team, and he actually did improve his draft status. But that was one of the rare occurrences where an injury really hurt somebody's career, okay? More often than not, it's smart to stay, okay? Some guys make good decisions. Obviously, Trey Turner made a good decision. But, you know, it, to each their own. Make your best decision you possibly can. But Ali Gay, I think, needs another year. I really do. And I think he's going to ball out if he comes back. Bye, Bingo, you're right. Will Campbell is the probably the most important LSU offensive line recruit since Lyle Collins. And Lyle Collins was as big as it gets. I think he was the number three national player. Let's see here. Arden Key should have stayed. I disagree. I actually think the other way. I think Arden Key should have been allowed to leave after his sophomore year. He was NFL ready after his sophomore year. Him having to come back another year hurt him. Let's see. Gray Gray says Elias's freshman year isn't close to Stingley's. I disagree with that. Um, Elias got burned a lot. A lot early in the season. Okay. So Mississippi State was his first ever game. He made a stupid decision to undercut a route on third and 16. It was dumb. Okay. He was burned on that play. Obviously, you nobody know burned against Vanderbilt because it was Vanderbilt. Missouri, th did he get burned against Missouri? I, I don't I, I I don't know. Okay. Then after Missouri, we had the rest and then we had the South Carolina game had a pick six I don't think he got burned against South Carolina this game well I don't remember Rick's getting burned against Auburn did he get burned against Auburn I don't know and then after that the Auburn game was what a bye week and then there was the Alabama game where he didn't get burned. So, Vernon, what's up, dude? Congrats on the new coach. What do you think? Vernon's a big Auburn channel. So, was Ricks burned a lot this year, early in the year, especially early in the year? I remember the Mississippi State game. It's his first ever game, okay? Made a stupid decision to undercut the route, okay? War Eagle, congrats, man. Honest, Vernon, give me your honest opinion. From an Auburn perspective, 
First off, Vernon, let me know if you think Auburn fans are happy with the hire and what's their reaction to it and what do you think about the hire? Because obviously this is a big deal for us too because we play Auburn every year. Marcus is a big Brian Harson guy. I saw Cole Kubelik, a friend of mine, said he's a big Brian Harson guy. You know one thing I like about Brian Harson? He spent seven years at Boise. Think about staying seven years, and Boise is a great program. Great resources. Obviously, the field's cool. Seven years to get his opportunity. I'm, I'm all about guys that work their tails off to go from Jonesboro. You know what's funny? I've lived in Arkansas for 20-plus years, okay? It's not a big state. It's only 3 million people. Jonesboro is the fourth biggest city in Arkansas I've never been. Jonesboro is in the northeast corner of the state of Arkansas. Nobody ever goes to Jonesboro. It's a rough, rough, and it's not, it's not a bad city, but it's a place where not a lot of people go. I mean, it's not an easy place to, to, to make a coaching stop, and Brian Harson did that. So let's see. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I honestly think Elias Ricks had a better freshman year than Sting. And don't get it twisted, Sting was pretty freaking good his freshman year. Yeah, Vernon, you actually did do that. Exactly, Jonathan. And and that's my main point. I agree with Devin on this. What did Devin say? Okay, so let's be honest. Elias Ricks balled out, but at the same time, Stingley was covering half the field, so he wasn't getting looked at on top of being hurt. Okay, so I agree with you for the, the South Carolina game. They decided to, to throw the ball to Elias Ricks' side, and that allowed him to get the pick six. Totally agree with that. But against Auburn, Gus Malzahn decided to attack Derek Stingley's side of the field. It, 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 I did the whole film study on it. And Derek Stingley. So, you know, I don't want this live stream to just be Stingley versus Ricks because, you know, there's no point in comparing the two if they play for the same team. I still think Ricks was unfreaking real this year. I mean, Every game, what he finished with two pick sixes or three. It's crazy. You you lose count how many pick sixes this guy had. All right, let's see this. 50 sacks. I'm all about it. What, what's Marcus talking about? Corey Foreman and Ollie Gay at one end. Mixer and Mason. Yeah, that'd be that'd be like. Marquis, oh, uh, Booger's feisty now. All right, let her out. Pick her up. Ooh. Let her go out. She's being feisty. Pick six, Ricks. But don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Derek Stingley is one of the greats at LSU. You ready? But that, I mean, there's legitimate criticisms about you know everybody. That's true, Eric. The only problem is Ricks won't be eligible for the draft. And I've shared this before, and I'll share it again. College players should be allowed to leave after their second year with stipulations. I believe it would be fair to allow college players to leave after the second year if they get a certain draft evaluation. I truly do believe that. Derek Stingley's proved everything he needs to prove. Okay. The only thing he didn't prove is being able to have a good game against Alabama. That's it. Okay? Had a rough game this year. Had a rough game the year before. But other than that, he did everything. He's one of the best DB to ever put on the LSU uniform. Baton Rouge native, I believe second-year players should be allowed to go to the NFL. I do. And I know it's not a popular opinion. I know a lot of people fear for the college game if that becomes the case. I, I do believe that. What's up, Chris Ghost? 
Jonah, what's up from St. Gabriel? Carl the Cat, who's plugged in, says Jeff Grimes. That makes sense. Familiar with LSU. Lloyd, thank you for the $15 chat, man. What would you like to talk about, Lloyd? Anything you want to talk about, Lloyd, let me know. Baylor fired Munoz. So music, a lot of you want uh, Jorge Munoz back. Let's go. And that's such an interesting YouTube name, just music. Not What kind of music? Harry Styles? Watermelon sugar. Huh? You can tell he's my favorite. It's my girlfriend's favorite artist of all time, Harry Styles. That was a One Direction. Don't play it. Don't play it to where they can hear. All right, so I can demonetize. Cut it off, baby. Okay. Let's see. I think Jay Ward. Jay Ward had a good year. Won the Arkansas game for us. You wear your tennis shoes outside. Where are my Crocs? I don't know. So the last time my girlfriend put my tennis shoes on to go find I don't booger. Know where your stupid tennis shoes. Did my tennis shoes come today? Mm mm. Where are they? Mm mm. Right over there. Harry's a beast. Mm. Thanks, Chris Kosa. I appreciate you, man. I'm taking my niece to see Harry for her 16th birthday on the coolest aunt there ever was. Pit tickets. Pit tickets. Right, Bubba? Yeah, I just don't want someone to start playing some Harry Styles. No, and then we'll and then and then a Harry and then Harry Styles. We'll get a copyright strike. Harry Styles comes in wanting a copyright strike my channel because he needs more money. I'm kidding. Mangus Munoz and Callaway Dream Team. No, it's, it's a one spot. When you do a $200 Super Chat, this essentially becomes your channel. Okay? But in all, in all seriousness, Marcus isn't just dropping a $200 Super Chat. He actually provides a lot of insight that's made me rethink my opinions. That's the point. Anything I say is not right. I think it's right because it's my opinion, but that's what's great. You guys get to have your opinion, and it's, it's good. It's just open discussion. Uh, no, Chris Coase, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> that, that's very unlikely. Lane Kiffin's not leaving Ole Miss anytime soon unless it's to take uh, an Alabama or I almost said a USC type of job. So we'll see. You're right, Black OT. The Cowboys stole that Collins pick. It's still crazy to me that that happened. And that was weird because, like, Lyle Collins had got to choose where he wanted to go, and he decided to go to the most loaded offensive line in the NFL and still found a way to, to get on the starting lineup. That's interesting music. Uh, Jeff Luby, I think that's his name, Jeff Lubby, Luby. Daryl, that's interesting. Pete Carmichael Jr., but remember – well, I, I, I've read different stories on how much play calling Pete Carmichael actually does. Um, Bayou, that's a good question. It would be a better question if I knew what the schedule looked like next year. There's no telling what kind of changes they're going to make. I hate, and I really do mean this, I hate the fact that Texas will not be playing LSU. Um, I really hope that that game gets made up. Why not have a preseason LSU versus Texas game in Tiger Stadium? Proceeds go to relief. I don't know why that doesn't make any sense. Evan, that's a good question. I think he's talking about the, the kit we were talking about, the, the offensive guard from Harvard. There's also uh, Eric uh, on the East Coast. So we'll see. I, obviously... I think Pete Carmichael is pretty dead set on winning a, a, a Saints Super Bowl. And as you can tell, I'm a Saints fan. Not as big of a Saints fan as I am an LSU fan, but, you know, this is, this is – I keep saying it. This is our year. Let's see. Mark Sanchez. It's interesting. I got a Mark Sanchez story as well. I got a cool Mark Sanchez story, and I got a cool Glenn Dorsey story about that. This juicy news. <laughs> I like it. Let's see. Sean, that is interesting. 
you know, the Sam Ellinger thing. Because he's obviously not an NFL quarterback. Devin, I don't know why he would leave. I, I don't understand. The only move that I think would make sense for B.J. Ojolari is going to go play with his brother at Georgia. And if that happens, I can't ever blame someone to go play with the sibling. B.J. Ojolari gave us one excellent year. I think Matt Leinert's probably the most overrated college quarterback ever. I, I'll go on ahead and say it. He's he's Matt Liner to me was the worst Heisman winner, if that makes sense. That doesn't mean it was bad. I just don't think anybody that had Reggie Bush in their backfield because Reggie Bush was on a different level than any running back in our era. Yeah, the Eric Wilson thing. No, it's not. Mark Sanchez is is, is not a okay, realistic country. One more time. All right, Bug, Bug before she goes night night. I want to say good night to Bug. It's past her bedtime. Mm. Oh, she's got it. She's got an aroma tonight. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love you so much, Bug. Thank everyone for helping pay for your medicine. She's got a big appointment coming up on January. She, does. Uh, she got a big one. Mm. Love it. Good night, night, night. She's getting more comfortable on camera. That's a comfortable baby. She's big appointment coming up in January. A little She's nervous, but comes with it. And I, I really am serious. Booger is my first ever dog, and to have that happen when you know when you're 29, you know you got you got to understand. Dog owners understand this. I never understood this. But dogs just hit different. They they hit your heart a little bit different than anything else. So, and thanks to Marcus, we got our got our Azadils paid for, and uh, a good chunk of her appointment fees coming up. But thank you guys, I really do appreciate it. What's up, Big Trey? Got time, Kevin? Uh, I think you're just joining us. You and Tony, your cards will be shipped out tomorrow. So just to let you guys know. I have to ship out a lot of stuff. UPS and USPS is a mess right now. So, Kevin, if you don't get your card until the next time LSU wins a national championship, you understand why. Good question, Black Goat, to you, and I'm, I'm happy to do that after your super chat. Because normally, you know, when people ask you to do depth charts, you know, it's kind of hard to just do that on the fly, but thanks for your super chat. Let's get to it. The wide receiver depth chart for next year, obviously Kayshawn's going to be your, your number one guy, okay? And I don't like to do X, Y, Z because obviously receivers line up everywhere. So your Devonta Smith, your Terrace Marshall, your Jamar Chase, your number one guy is going to be Kayshawn. And then I, I think Coy is going to have to be in that starting group. I think he did enough against Ole Miss. Uh, obviously, Coy has a good relationship with uh, the freshman quarterbacks. You know, obviously a lot of people like Coy. So I, I would I would say Coy, and then I would say um, Jure. I think Jure did enough this year. Obviously put his head down, put in the work. So I, uh, how many of you think that that should be the starting group? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Devin. I appreciate that. That's fine. YouTube can get their cut. But, you know, YouTube is what introduced me to you guys. So that's great. So I'm telling you, like I said, I think I am underselling Chris Hilton. I, I guess I'm just not as high on Chris Hilton as some of you. And the funny thing about it is I never hear you guys mention Chris Hilton. I've <laughs> Deion Sanders for head coach. I'm very fascinated. Number one, HBCUs getting some respect that they deserve. Number two, Deion pulling in some good recruits. I'm excited. Let's do it. So, Ken, you're a Trey Palmer guy. But see, that's the thing, Michael. 
based on what I have received, a lot of you like, of the four receivers that are in the class right now, a lot of you like Deion Smith the best. Is that is that a fair assessment? I think based on what I've received, most of the messages I get, okay, this is how I think most of you would rank the wide receivers we have coming in. So, most of you have Deion Smith as the best one. And then the number two one, a lot of you say Jack Besh is the number two one. And then you would say Malik Neighbors and then Chris Hilton. That's just by the messages, even though Chris Hilton is the highest ranked one out of all of them. I mean, Chris Hilton's a freak athlete, elite speed, quiet guy, goes about his business. I just don't I, I honestly don't don't know a whole lot about him. The only the only one of those receivers that LSU had committed that just blew me away was JoJo. I think all four of them have big time capability. Maximum now music. Uh, no, <laughs> Eric Gilbert coming back. That's a good question. You, he's probably a better person to ask that than than me. But the thing about Eric Gilbert coming back is that there's always going to be a question of whether or not he, he really wants to be there. And that's something. And you know that I always say this. I want Eric Gilbert back. But the one thing I do not want is for a college athlete to feel like they're not happy with where they are. I feel completely different about this with professional athletes. Obviously, yeah, obviously I would rather professional athletes to be happy. I'd rather human beings to be happy. Well, thank you so much. Look at my national championship koozie. Um, I would obviously rather professional athletes be happy. But you're paid to be a professional athlete no matter where you go. So I don't feel bad about professional athletes being unhappy with where they are as much as I do college athletes. So I don't want Eric Gilbert to be here if his heart's not entirely with LSU. And I'm not questioning his work ethic. I'm saying heart from an emotional sense. Okay, if he's not happy here, go somewhere where you're going to be happy. That's a good question, Jake. Or um, no, John, it's one two hundred dollars super chat, which is great. Three would be better <laughs> if you want to match uh, markets go right on ahead, or if you want to hit the the Venmo with one hundred dollars. Same thing. I'll take it. Um, exactly, Marcus. That's a good point. You know, Eric Gilbert is thinking about the NFL when Matt Ryan pays a personal visit. Now, obviously, Marietta and Atlanta is not a far drive, but when Matt Ryan comes to your high school, you're thinking NFL. And honestly, if Eric Gilbert came out and could be in the draft this year, there'd be a team that draft him. He's that big of a freak, you know? Now, teams would have their questions, but the dude is a beast. <laughs> Kane, you could stop. You could stop. Kane's just trolling the other Carter. Colin Jeter. I didn't think we'd get a Colin Jeter reference. That's a good question, Kevin. I, I honestly think Patrick Peterson could do whatever he wants. He's got a good foundation. I I see him more of, of taking an analyst role. I really do. Like not like NFL Network analyst. He, everyone's going to want him as an analyst because, well, he's a funny, smart, good-looking dude. So I could see him being the next Ryan Clark. But if he wants to coach, he can coach too. <laughs> so, you know, he can do whatever he wants. I mean, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. So if he plays a few more years and makes a few more Pro Bowls, he's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. And when you're a pro football Hall of Famer, I mean, Tony Dungy gets paid $90,000 just to go speak somewhere, and you got to fly him in on your dime. 
Is that true, Ter- Terrell? I mean, do do you have do you have do you have info on that? Do you have all right? Uh, starting wide receiver group for twenty twenty one. Okay, let's run it back. How about it? I don't mind running it back. Okay, so to clarify, my three starting receivers next year are Coy Moore, Jure, and um, Kayshawn. My backups would be Trey, John Trey, if he decides to come back. I don't think that's happening. Racy, if he decides to come back, I don't think that's happening. I would say Trey, Alex Adams, and then Dion, Dion Smith. That that would be that. You know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> That's a good question, uh, Jake. What about the Indiana offensive coordinator? The hard thing about the Indiana thing is all those coaches are going to be pursued because Indiana was by far the best coach team. I mean, Michael Penix was was great, but even when he went down, Indiana was a good football team. They had a great wide receiver. Fry Fogel was probably the best non-Devonta Smith receiver in football this year. Ooh, Eric is predicting Brian Thomas Jr. coming in. I like that. You know what's interesting? So, PJ said JoJo will not be missed. You know what, uh, PJ? I wish I could... uh, In a way, he won't be missed because if he wants to be at Alabama, he needs to go to Bama, like I always say. You will never see me badmouth a recruit going somewhere else, even if it's Alabama. It sucks. It goes to our rival. JoJo's going to be good. <laughs> I, I've never been more certain of something than that kid being a, a, a baller. That's why I talked about him so much on these live streams. So, uh, exactly, Eric. And you're right, Tony. You can't miss what we didn't have. So I'm not going to. I'm not missing him. I'm just. I'm just saying he's going to be good. Uh, there's no other way around it. Todd Grantham's not a good fit. And something else is, we saw this plenty of times, Dan Mullen yelling at Todd Grantham. The one thing you need a defensive coordinator to do is get along with that Orgeron. Because obviously this Polini relationship was sour. But, you know, I, I, I would lie to you and say if Brian Thomas Jr. committed, I think he does become the best receiver in this class. I like his game a lot. But once again, if he wants to go out of state, there's a lot of recruits that like to go elsewhere. And I can't blame him for it. But, you know, th- there's a danger of going elsewhere. You know, I-, I remember the day when Speedy Noyle decided to go to Texas A&M and the world was falling. And we turned out okay. So it's weird. Kane, that's a good point. So I think this partially hurt JoJo Earl from becoming a five-star. So he eventually became a top 50 kid. But because the commit to LSU was just out of nowhere, it, it, it there was no real lead-up to it. it. It did feel a little weird. But he's just kind of a low-key guy. He was very committed to his high school. Alito's a very buttoned-up program. Art Bryles? You want to talk about the... The, the worst hire uh, to, to bring in right now with a Title IX investigation? Uh, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. That, 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 is, that is not, not great. <laughs> and, and don't get it wrong. Kendall Browse is probably top five car in the CC West right now. But yeah, that's I don't know. Speedy Noel for offensive coordinator. Kane, don't make me block you. <laughs> what is Speedy Noel doing now? Mm, what a waste of a crazy talent.
So, Mark, it's the timeline is interesting, uh, and I get your point. I don't. I don't want to get into it now because this has been a, a fun chat. It is your two hundred dollars super chat. There are some interesting parts of the story that that do make me wonder, but I, I, you know, I, I do think, you know, with Verge stepping down, it made a lot of sense. So we'll 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 see. I mean. I'm very interested to see how, how this uh, this investigation plays out. Let's see. It is sucks that JoJo's going BMI. Exactly, Elias. And I hate it. And, and part of it was I hate that how much I really liked watching him play. And, you know, it was kind of like JoJo was a more well-rounded trend in Holiday. Obviously not a world-class speedster, but a very fast kid. Um, but that's the thing, you know, I also, and you know, I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't love Keanu Colt. Bama flipped him too. He's also a freak athlete. That kid is shredded. So it is what it is. Got to move on. Bama took two of our best guys. It tells you what we have though. We still have a top 10 class. I know Eric and that and trust me, I don't like the. And you know, you guys know me. I'm I'm not a focus too much on one recruit guy, but it's tough. Can I share my tiger droppings handle? Hand to God, I think I've visited tiger droppings two or three times. Just visited. I don't have a tiger droppings handle. I think one of my videos got shared in there. You're right, Michael. And it's weird to look at Bama's offensive line class. So one thing I, I – just to let you all in on something, I actually do go watch Nick Saban's interviews. Uh, he does a Bama postgame show, and there's something I really like about Nick Saban. I love how he gives interviews because he's never going to give you anything, but he'll give you something if you actually pay attention. So it was after the big game against CBS – all right, and I want you guys to listen to this, all right? It was after the CBS game, all right? And the reporter asked Nick Saban about Mac Jones for Heisman. And they asked him a very soft Heisman question. So what did Nick Saban do? He didn't talk about any of the kids. He said, well, we got a great team full of great players, right? So what does that tell you? Nick Saban is really good at not pumping up a player's psyche. You know who's not done a good job of that? Ed Orgeron. He's not done a good job with quotes, all right, and with player evaluations and player pump-ups. For instance, Chris Curry probably should have never gotten the number 18 uniform. Character-wise, absolutely. Player-wise, was questionable. So, you know, it's tough. Good question here from Michael. Thanks for your super chat. Chances Derek Stingley Jr. plays next year. So, I think that's a decision up to him. If he de if Derek Stingley Jr. said, look, I gave you a national championship and an All-American season, I had a ton of injuries last year. I stepped on a yard marker. I had a weird hospitalization before the Mississippi State game. I had a concussion against Arkansas. If he says, look, I'm sitting out for the year, I get it. Totally get it. I would not bash him for it. The one thing I would want from Derek Singley Jr. is for him to want to play next year obligated you have to do something when you don't have to. So if Stingley wants to come back and he wants to play next year, I would love for him to come back and play next year. When he's fully healthy, he is the best cornerback in college football unless it's Devonta Smith on the other side. Nevertheless, he's still the best. No one could guard that dude. He's the best defensive back in college football. 
Jared said, I don't care if he plays. Well, you should care if he plays because he's he's great. Ken said maybe it's time to retire the 7 and 18 numbers. You know what, Ken? You know what would be a better way to do this? Um, Marcus, thank you again. Thoughts on potentially Bama, UGA, Florida, Clemson, Ohio State, and Notre Dame all having less experienced QBs than LSU next year. Interesting. Um, that is very interesting. We'll see about it. I, Bryce Young looks to be pretty good. I don't know how great he is. I like DJ Uilagalele better. Uh, UGA has JT Daniels coming back. I think he has the same amount of experience as Max. Florida has the the, the gadget guy taking over next year. Can he throw like Kyle Trask? I'm not so sure. Ohio State, the Quinn Ewers kid isn't coming until a couple of years. I don't even know who Justin Fields' backup is. And I don't know what Notre Dame has in the stable. So LSU is going to have uh, uh, a, a huge a huge advantage. Amacat. Wait, Amacat's in here? What's up? What's up? About time we saw Amacat. So, Marcus, hopefully that answers your question. I I think Yui Longalale is going to be the favorite to win the Heisman next year. I'd put some money on him. I think he's special. I really do. Yui Longalale has got some freak athleticism. <laughs> Lindale White. Now, I think Miles Brennan will be back whether it's him or Max Johnson. They both have nearly the same amount of starts right now. We might have the best QB room next year. That's a good point, Sip. The problem is that you don't have QB clarity. So Clemson knows that Yui Longalala is going to be their guy next year. Alabama kind of knows Bryce Young is going to be their guy next year. Who's our guy? Well, there's three guys that could have a legitimate gripe to be a starter. A lot of people are high on Max Johnson. Well, uh, I'm happy to tell you guys I'm going to do a film study on Max Johnson. His Ole Miss game wasn't as good as I initially thought. And that's not me putting down because the Florida game was better than I initially thought. Okay? Max was unreal in the Florida game. Unreal, all things considered. The Ole Miss game, I, I really... Wondered what what happened. I I really do believe a lot of it was Kayshawn. I really do. That's not to say it wasn't great. Now, I don't want anyone to take that any other way. But Max Johnson really struggled in the red zone. For instance, here's a good example. It was third and five. We're in the red zone. We are playing Ole Miss. Okay, so when you play Ole Miss, Ole Miss doesn't kick field goals. Okay, so. Ole Miss was 4-6 of six coming into the game to kick field goals. They just don't kick field goals. So that's why Ed Orgeron was smart in the first half to be aggressive on fourth down because kicking field goals versus a team that's going to score a lot of touchdowns, the math doesn't add up. So it's third and five. We're in the extended red zone, and Trey Palmer runs an option route, and Max Johnson misses him, and it would have been a wide-open touchdown. That was one of the many red zone mistakes that he made, whereas the week before against Florida, Max Johnson was excellent, excellent in the red zone. Max Johnson's throw to Jare Jenkins for the first touchdown against Florida, probably the best throw we've seen this year by an LSU quarterback. It was a think of beauty. But in the red zone versus Ole Miss, he made some really, really rash decisions. So, you know, that's me picking on a true freshman quarterback who was making his second start. I'm just letting you know that his Ole Miss game wasn't so good where you just hand the keys to the offense to him. It's not, it, it, it wasn't. At first, I honestly thought it was because I was caught up in the hype because we had, he's 2 0 as a starter. And, you know, we got Kayshawn going, his second big game in a row. And he's got chemistry with Coy. And I, I love the way the offense was flowing. But then when I went back and rewatched it, I was like, well, it, there's some things I liked and there's some things that I didn't. So I'll do a Max Johnson film study 
like I said before, I don't make money on film studies, unfortunately, from Google AdSense because the rights belong to ESPN and CBS. But I will do one to, to prove my point. Um, also, I'll tell you this. A lot of you are Trey Palmer fans. Trey had a really good game against Ole Miss. Should have had a few touchdowns if we can get the Max and Trey thing going. We'll see. Trey got better when he was healthy. The one thing I didn't get, and LSU just makes so many decisions that, that don't make a lot of sense to me, I don't know why Trey wasn't returning kicks from the get-go. It, it just didn't make, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. TJ and Max both need a lot of film work. But that's what happens when you run with a true freshman quarterback. And, you know, as, as great as a quarterback room is at LSU, if the right transfer comes across, do you just say no? T-Bob's very high on Nuss. I mean, it's pretty clear he's mature beyond his years, so I would agree with that. You know, a lot of people say that about quarterbacks, but Nuss is the one doing all the recruiting. He almost got Savian Bird here. Heck, we'll see. I don't, Marcus. I mean, Miles was really good in his first three weeks. Granted, well, you know, when you look back on it, our first three weeks were against the three easiest teams on our schedule. So, well, Missouri, well, they, they were slightly better than Arkansas because they beat them, but still. Jimmy Burrow as D.C., it sounds better than it actually is, and that's not a shot at Jimmy. Why? I, I Imagine if your son, in your home state, was the franchise quarterback of an NFL team. You'd want to be with your son and go to every one of the games. Once again, when you hire a coach, you want the coach to be 110% in on what they are doing. That's not to say that Jimmy Burrow wouldn't work hard. It's just his heart is with his son. If my son, now granted I'm not a father, but... Every father on here would, would say, would agree with me. If my son was the number one quarterback for the Bengals and I was out of coaching and he was playing in the same state I lived in, there's no way I'd want to coach. I'd want to go to every game. But on Garrett Nussmeyer, I mean, it, it, he's not going to be ready to start as a true freshman. No one is. It's too early, Scott, to say if somebody's going to transfer. Let's see. Yeah, Kane makes a good point. They're all learning a new playbook, so that does help Nutsmeyer in that sense. I, I just, uh, you know, I, and, and honestly, think about this. How many true freshman quarterbacks started as a true freshman in the SEC and turned out to be special. So Jalen Hurts is probably the only one I could really think of off the top of my head because Bo Nick started as a true freshman. Is he is he the worst quarterback in the West? I, is he? I don't I don't know. Um, Kellen Mond started as a true freshman. The worst part about Texas A&M's team is. Their quarterback and still skill guys. Let's see. Will Mason Smith start? It's probably better he doesn't. It's probably better he doesn't.
there's so much pressure to start as a true freshman. And most LSU guys just don't start as true freshmen. They just don't. I mean, Lyle Collins is as good of a recruit as we've ever gotten. Barton Simmons says Lyle Collins is his best high school player he's ever seen live. Didn't start as a true freshman. And he could play all the positions on the offensive line. Kind of feels like our recruiting class is in an awesome neighborhood team deciding to... (laughs) Let's see. Who's a statue? Let's see. Yeah, Jaqueline's definitely a starter next year. And then is Guillory the other defensive tackle or... Does Glenn Logan come back? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Sip. All three of the quarterbacks need work. But, you know, it, it, this is something funny, and I I, I bring this up on Clemson. Uh, so I did ESPN Radio in South Carolina, I bring this up and Clemson fans get angry, but Trevor Lawrence, his sophomore season, had two 300-yard games. Think about that. Trevor Lawrence, who is this transcendent, can't-miss quarterback prospect, had two 300-yard games. He started every game last year. He had two 300-yard games. So, you know, there's so much bad quarterback play or – mediocre quarterback play before you actually become great. Brennan wasn't a senior. He was a junior, Stephanie, but even if he was a senior, this year doesn't count against your eligibility. Uh, Bayou says, I think TJ's the odd man out. I'm not sure about that. I'm not. TJ has the, TJ has the most promise to me when he's, when he's on, he looks like a pro, but if he gets pressure, he makes bad decisions. Sounds like every quarterback. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying you fine tune that we're good dudes. A cannon. Obviously TJ has the best arm out of the three. Um, Touch is obviously not there. He throws the ball a little late. And in in both of the starts that he won, he had more time to prepare than the opposition. That is such a huge advantage when you have two weeks studying film of the opposition. The one thing you could say, Max Johnson in his final game played a far worse defense than any defense TJ played. Ole Miss's defense is beyond awful. They were worse than LSU's defense by a mile. With that said, Max only had a week to prepare for each of the games that he won. So that is a huge advantage because most games that you play don't have pandemic bye weeks, which LSU had multiple times. Yeah, I think I think TJ can can be a Division One starter. It, it's just he should have never him or Max should have never even played this year. So neither one of them are finished products. Florida's defense is also trash. With that said, the conditions were horrible, far more pressure. And on on top of that, that was a game Florida had to win. So, you know, I mean, Arkansas's defense had one starter on their defensive line. One. Their number two through six defensive linemen were not available for the Arkansas game. So, you know, Max was up against it. Max didn't have Terrace Marshall to throw to. He didn't have Eric Gilbert to throw to. So, neither one of them, to me, really... The Max Johnson Florida game blew me away. There's no other way around it one of the best performances we've ever seen from an LSU quarterback, considering all things, his first start on the road, killed a team's playoff hopes. The Ole Miss game was a step back for me, though. It was. 
even though statistically he was better, it was a step back to a certain degree. He wasn't bad, but it wasn't necessarily stamp he's our guy type of performance. Don't let in results fluctuate your decision. That's a good point, Lee Chan, whose defense is not trash this year. Exactly. TJ does look a lot like Ben. I think that's a pretty fair comparison. Um, who do you th- – hopefully it's the old Ben instead of the Ben now. The Ben now is the worst NFL quarterback right now. When you get outplayed by Ryan Finley, you're, you have issues. And when your most experienced receiver is doing TikTok dances on the team's logo – Got a problem. That's a good question, Stephanie. Um, I don't know. Uh, We spent a lot of time talking about that early. Uh, I've done a few videos on it. Um, So, obviously, the names that we mentioned, Marcus Freeman of Cincinnati, Brad White of Kentucky. Um, On the offensive side, obviously, you know, Russ Calloway is going to have a lot of momentum in the building. Seven yards is bad in the first half. Juju had negative points yesterday. Negative. And remember this, okay? LSU's offensive line was bad, all right? They were really bad. But some of you took out a very important chunk of what I said earlier about Stevens Minger and Scott Linehan, Okay? Yeah, Juju's on my fantasy team, too. Not a happy camper right now. So, this was the first year LSU had a new running backs coach. Now, Tommy Robinson had a lot of people that liked him, but Ed Orgeron wanted to promote Kev Falk, which, so far, so good. You know, anytime you get two top 10 running backs in a recruiting class, you're doing a pretty good job. Well, let's be honest. The LSU running backs room was was very inconsistent. A lot of that has to do with bad offensive line play. A lot of that has to do with the pocket quarterback. But a good chunk of it's offensive line play. But the one thing that frustrated me was that we could not, and this was such a huge piece to our offense last year, We could not throw the football to running backs out of the backfield. We simply could not do it. We just simply couldn't ever connect to our check downs. We sucked at it. You're right, Sip. Callie's got a, Callie's a good relationship guy in that building. I agree with you, Chris, Christopher. More good than bad for Max in both of those games. It, it just, the Ole Miss game wasn't so exceptional for me to say, that's our guy. I don't know. Latino Church Gang 69. I would love for you to explain that name in a PG-13 way. Convert Cardell Thompson to a fullback. Why not? TDP was the best running back this year. Curry, a lot of you knew how I felt about him. I hated criticizing him because he was number 18, and he is a high-character guy, and Joe Burrow loved that guy. He's just not a great back. He's not a SEC-level back. And I showed in film studies. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. John Emery's a little bit of a disappointment uh, in a lot of ways because we were told the LASIK surgery was going to take him to the next level. I, I, the, the film last year we had on John Emery, which a lot of it was in mop-up duty, but you know he played a lot in prime time against Utah State, got the first TD in that game. You know, it just didn't click. It. it uh, I don't know. I know John Emery was going through a lot with COVID off the field, so I'm still holding out hope. I'm not going to – 
you know, I was very critical of Jason Hines this year. He had some really rough games in there. But because of so much that has happened off the field that we may or may not know about, you know, I, I'm going to hold out hope for both of those guys because both of them are extremely athletic and talented. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I'm very interested to see if John Emery figures this thing out because he was a five-star for a reason. You know, he played at Destran in high school. I mean, that's a tough high school to play. And Carvis, you're right about that. And as you pointed out in the Florida film study as well, when you have a mobile quarterback, it opens up lanes in a running game. I totally agree, Michael. Totally agree. So, music, you say that, and you know what? I used to be just like you. Emory needs to be the every down back instead of running back by committee. The same thing we had with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. The only problem with that is that you have to prove on the field beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt that you are the best running back. Tell me when John Emery has proved that. I, I cannot just say this guy deserves to, to, to get the lion's share of the carries when he's not proven that he deserves that. The Vanderbilt game was great. I, I cannot deny that. But then after that, there just wasn't enough there for me to say that that guy deserves to be the number one guy. Now, I would personally like to see him win that job, but you got to separate. You got to separate yourself. And Sip, I agree with you, which is a different point. The running back's rotation it was a little weird. And, you know, Cliff pointed that out multiple times. Okay. And I know Cliff's my uncle. I brought that up plenty of times, but he's right. The running back rotation was a little weird. But, you know, I, I defer to Kev Falk. He's running back's coach for a reason. What's up, David? Hoffpair? Is that how I say right? Hoffpair? 20 touches a game for both? Really, Carvis? We're going to old school smash mouth? Power eye flip. Y'all remember the power flip pitch? Bring it back. The Will Blackwell days. I like that. I don't know music. I, I don't know who does the rotation. I wish I knew, but I don't. Play complimentary football. Let's go. Trey Bradford had a good game and gets Ole Miss. But I cannot say this enough. That Florida game was rough. Yeah, it was rough. Those drops were critical out of the backfield. Critical. That's a good question, Stephanie. I don't know. Was that Stephen Ridley diving into the end? I, I love Stephen Ridley, man. Almost hit my car, though. Not going to lie. But, hey, I'm telling you, if you're Corey Kiner or Armani Goodwin and you watched LSU football, there's not a guy on LSU's roster where neither one of those guys would say, huh, well, that guy's better than me right now. So that's something you could be hopeful about. And those are Kev Falk's guys, especially Corey Kiner. We'll see. And on top of that, you know, Armani would have had to sit behind Tank Bigsby. That kid is a monster. His name's Tank, for goodness sakes. And that's a good point, Go Tigers. I like your name. Emory will be the best back in the country next year. Well, Najee's gone, Etienne's gone, so 
Well, they could come back, but they're gone. Emory looked good against Bama. Well, he had the one long run, which, by the way, was perfectly blocked. LSU got away with the hold on that play by Jason Hines. But then in all his other carries, he didn't really do a whole lot against Bama. But no, the long run was impressive. He did break a tackle, but that was one of the rare running plays where all the blocking went perfect, and LSU caught a break on that play where an Alabama defender was improperly aligned and they weren't ready at the snap. So yeah, I'm calling it Emory for Heisen, I hope. I hope. Who do I got for OC? I would guess Russ Callaway right now. I would. Eric Gilbert coming back? I'm not sure. Oh, Carvis, you've said a lot of smart things. I don't think they have that potential. I, I, I just don't, if I'm being completely honest. In my heart of hearts, and I love both of those guys. Anybody that puts on an LSU uniform, I love them more than any other college football player that ever existed. Okay? But Lindale and Reggie Bush? Ah. Carvis, you know better than that. Those dudes were monstrous. They were a movement. They were a movement. And I would agree with Marcus as well. All right, guys. I got some cold, low main in there. So, And I did a four-hour radio show, and I did some videos earlier today. So if I don't post a video tomorrow, I'm sorry. I, I might do one on Thursday for Christmas Eve. So, oh, Patrick, we spent two hours talking about this, and you come in right now? <laughs> Kayshawn showing out for the 337. Lafayette stand up. Let's go. <laughs> it's very weak. Big Chopper. Big Chopper. I love it when they call me Big Chopper. Y'all remember that show with P. Diddy on MTV making the band? There's a rapper he put on the map named Choppa who was terrible. When I was little, I met him in New York City, and I remembered him for the show. And if I remember correctly, I think I told him that I didn't really like his rapping. I, I <laughs> It was weird. It's still weird that I, I was supposed to move to New York earlier this year, but this stupid pandemic. Yeah, Michael, I appreciate it, man. Hey, it's the off season, and I brought this up on my last live stream, okay? I'm worried that you guys are going to leave me in the off season. You're not going to watch because there's no season. So I got some great stuff heading your way. I got a Max Johnson film study coming out soon. I'm going to wait for all this news to die down, and I'm going to share my true thoughts on Max Johnson moving forward. I've done a lot of film studies on TJ Finley. Not a whole lot, just on Max. Yeah, I know, Marcus. We need to set that up, man. I'll come do it. We'll go to a game, Coastal Carolina. I want to go see the shot to clear, man. Coastal Carolina had a 5'9 center. What did Stephanie say? Do you think that's my... No. Uh -uh. He could. I mean, anything's possible, but no. He's talented. Booger McFarland for team manager. Booger, his first thing he would say is, first thing we need to do is we need to score more points than the other team. But no, the Booger McFarland memes on Twitter are just, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. So I hope you guys stick around. We got a really fun audience. We really do. We got people from all backgrounds watching from Ukraine to Pennsylvania to Karen Crow, so different countries from all around the world. <laughs> Kidding, Karen Crow. Congrats on all your success in the playoffs. But really, though, if you go from, if you drive from Baton Rouge, or if you drive, okay, let's say like you drive from New Orleans, 
nonstop to Ruston and you get out of the car, you feel like you're in a completely different country. You really do. Yeah, I don't think Mark... Uh, I would like to see Laka Tour more involved. I think Marcus Spears is fine as an analyst. And let's be honest. There's a lot of positives for having Ryan Clark and Marcus Spears pumping LSU out all the time on national TV. And they're doing it not on college shows, but NFL shows. That's great branding. It really is great branding for the program. Is Baton Rouge safe for a New Yorker to visit? Absolutely. Well, obviously, you know, th there's a virus, so I don't recommend traveling all that much. But I guess you can do it safely. Baton Rouge is fine. Baton Rouge is a great city. Baton Rouge has a boba tea place now, which is very important. They have a boba tea place right next to Perkins called Kung Fu Tea right next to a Rouse's. You can't beat that. Marcus, I'm telling you, you got to understand, and, and for those that are into marketing, I'm not that much into it, but Gary V talks about this. The more you just hammer in brands, it is – the first time a product is marketed to you is not the first time that you fall in love with a product. It's very rare. It's normally the sixth or seventh time. Sometimes when you watch some of my videos, you'll see the same ads. I'm paying for that because that sixth or seventh time is the time that you'll fall in love with it. So when Marcus Spears and Ryan Clark are on ESPN every day and they say LSU, LSU, LSU – well, it, it does a lot. It does a lot of good. When they're saying it in front of Stephen A. Smith's face, it's even better because everybody watches that dude. Oh, really? From Mobile to Chalmette? Or, oh, Chalmette to Mobile. Okay, interesting. Coin did go to the same high school. Uh, Rummel. How many wins next season? That's a tough question to answer because I don't know how many games we're playing next year. Get up. Yeah, Marcus is just must-see TV. There's an interview I did with Marcus Spears at SEC Media Days. It's somewhere on the internet. I don't know where exactly it is. It was really good. Um, I did it with him. He was a spokesman for Johnsonville Sausage at the time. Good question. So I, I like LSU basketball. Okay, LSU baseball. I got the the last time we won it all. I got to be in Omaha for the full two weeks, which was great. Um, Anthony Rot Renato was a friend of mine in, uh, when I was in college. I was friends with Micah Gibbs. I don't know if I don't know if Micah Gibbs is still with LSU baseball or not. I'm drinking Michelob Lime Cactus Pear. Well, Lee, you got to go to an LSU game. You can't be an LSU fan and not go to an LSU game. So, yeah, any one of them are great. Obviously, you'd rather go to an SEC game, and you'd rather go to a night game, but they're all great. BR is a great place. I would fly into New Orleans, spend a night there, then go to Baton Rouge for a game, stay a night there, and then... Spend a few days in NOLA and go back. Corona with the Lime. That's great. All right, guys. I'm about to sign this off. If you want, I'll, I'll say this. Some of you get mad when I sign off. If you guys pump another Super Chat or another Venmo or Cash App, I don't mind hanging out for a few more minutes. Um, <laughs> Boosie. Webby and Young Boy are the reason why. Is that the reason why you're an LSU fan? That's true, Marcus. That is true, Marcus. If you can get an LSU and a Saints game in the same weekend, this past weekend was actually the best weekend to do it. You got the lane train, and then the next day you got Patrick Mahomes. My dude, uh, Mincy, got to do that. Michael wants more minutes. Okay. What would you like to talk about? All right, Michael. I know, Marcus. I was ready to sign this thing off. I was ready to go eat some lo mein. 
What would you like to talk about, Michael? I appreciate your donation. If someone else matches Michael's donation, I don't mind hanging out for a little bit longer. Um, that's a good question, Marcus. My five-hour energy is empty. Okay, so best plan for Nola BR weekend. Okay, so obviously if it's a game weekend, if you're a Saints fan, like you said, Marcus, going to an LSU Saints weekend is the best weekend to, to do that, um, which is great. Obviously, those are very two unique game experiences. In the offseason, a NOLA BR weekend, you know, if you're a tourist, obviously it's better just to spend it in New Orleans. And then... Uh, I would stay in New Orleans. Obviously, hotels are kind of expensive in New Orleans, depending on where you stay. I have Airbnb Connect, so. Um, but still, you know, it's it's tough. But, you know, I think the best thing to do for a NOLA BR weekend is to fly into New Orleans, stay in New Orleans, spend a day in Baton Rouge, go visit the campus, and then just go back to New Orleans. I, I don't think that they're – and you – and maybe some Baton Rouge jeans can correct me on this. I don't know if there's a night experience in Baton Rouge that you can't have in New Orleans. I just don't think that's true vice versa. Who else desperately hopes the, the booth loses? I'm from Louisiana. What? Oh, okay. I'm from Louisiana. I like that. <laughs> Music says Baton Rouge sucks and I live here. You know, there's some good and bad about Baton Rouge. There is. You know, I'm telling you, one, and I know it's, this is going to sound weird. Um, yeah, New Orleans Frenchman's the place to be. Frenchman's the funnest place in New Orleans. Baton Rouge is a good city. I don't know if it's the absolute best SEC city to live in. I would say out of all the SEC cities I've gone to, Tuscaloosa is not bad. Tuscaloosa is not bad at all. Um, is it great? No, it's good though. I like Tuscaloosa. My favorite SEC city to visit. Now I'm extremely biased because my best friends live there is Fayetteville. I really do like Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, it's actually a really good place to live. And it's very well centered. I like Fayetteville a lot. Uh, Fayetteville's like top five cities to live every year. Cost of living is not expensive. Crime is some of the lowest crime rates in, 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 in the country. And there's so many jobs in that reason, region. There's so many. Athens is a really good college city. I don't know anything about living in Athens. So, yeah. Let's see. Downtown BRs. I think it's okay. No, Nashville's great, but do you really consider Nashville an SEC city? I've been to Nashville a lot, and I've never even gone to Vanderbilt's campus. I am not a realtor, but a lot of my failed comedians are. Tsunami's a beast. I haven't been to Tsunami in a while. Don't say that, though, because my girlfriend's always looking for new sushi spots, and I'm never Taking her to Tsunami in Baton Rouge. And she's a sushi fanatic. But when I'm in Baton Rouge, I want to go have oysters. So I want to go to Acme. I want to go to Phil's. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to, even though I love sushi, I can't get sushi where I live now. Um, and Tsunami is good. Ichiban, yeah, the, the Matt Moscona roll. I heard that. I heard that thing's a beast. I gotta try that. I've never had the Moscona roll. It's 
the Scona roll. I, I've got to try a Scona roll. Got to support my dude. I haven't talked to Scone in a while, though. Is the Scona roll good, though? Kane's dropping zero lyrics, man. You can't do that in it. You don't want to get me hype. Come on, I got to go to bed at a decent hour. I'm like a ghetto Popeye, but I don't need spinach, baby. Let's go. Nobody knows about zero. Nobody knows. What am I doing for Christmas? Good question. So I'm really close um, with my parents. So I'm going to socially distant spend time with my parents. Um, I don't know if Cliff's still in here, but Cliff's my uncle. He lives in Houston, so I can't see him. But Cliff can attest I'm very close to my parents. I didn't grow up around a lot of cousins and, and uncles and aunts. I grew up in a small town in Arkansas where it was just me and my parents and my brother. So, you know, I'm going to spend time with them. I'm going to spend time with the girlfriend's family, who I'm really close to, and um, just hang out. Hang out with Bug. Zero is so underrated. The most city Don, baby. <laughs> Man, I'm like Linux. I'm strong to the finish. I'm like a ghetto pop pie, but I don't need spinach. What kind of galaxy brain lyricism is that? That is crazy. It's crazy. Like, who comes up with lyrics like that? I like Zero. I like Mickey Fax a lot. I'm a big Mickey Fax fan. Not a big name, but Mickey can just shred. Mickey is a shredder. Mickey Fax comes up with lines that don't make sense. It's like stupid. I don't think anyone ever said Corey Raymond's not qualified. I don't think anyone ever said that. There's a difference between being qualified and there's a difference between hiring someone to be the play caller of a top five defensive job in the country despite never having called the plays. Mickey's a beast. Mickey is a freestyle monster. I would love to meet that guy one day. Um, guy, he's just he's just a next level, and he's not a big name. He's just someone that I like a lot. Like he's not going to have like hits. He, he's not going to sell out and make like pop hits or anything like that. He's just good. Glenn Campbell, the country artist. I don't know. Uh, the Rhinestone. Uh, I, I don't want to disrespect Glenn Campbell. What's the song? Rhinestone. That's a goat right there. Rhinestone Cowboy. Is that the name of the song? Deion Sanders. I've given Deion Sanders a lot of credit. I, I don't know. I. HD from Arkansas. Johnny Cash is from Arkansas. It's the most famous Arkansan right there. Johnny Cash and um, old Billy. Lee Chan, if you and I love your comments. That and I'm an old Odo Beckham guy. He's my room. Uh, that that is silly. <laughs> Odell as recruiting coordinator would be really bad or really good. It, it wouldn't. There would be no in between. I think the song was Old Town Road. <laughs> Music. You finally lived up your name because that is really freaking funny. Well, all right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and sign this off because that, that is re music. That is so freaking funny. <laughs> No, man, Glenn Campbell down the road. <laughs>
Oh man, that is so freaking funny. Oh man. <laughs> that is <laughs> just the way you delivered that line is so fantastic, man. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks again, Marcus, for your, your super donation. I appreciate that. Eric Kane, uh Cliff, Michael, Louisiana Animal. Uh, there's too many people to thank. I really appreciate your support of the channel. Once again, we may get a video in tomorrow. We may not. I got like some adult things I have to do, like getting insurance. Uh, Carvis, I'll see you later, dude. Uh, go Tigers. Michael, appreciate that super chat. Music, I hope everybody looks up Glenn Campbell's version of Old Town Road. That made me laugh. But for real, go support a dude like Mickey Fax. Mickey Fax is a monster. Monster with his lyrics. You don't have to be a rap fan to appreciate that dude's lyrics. It's crazy. All right, guys. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at Carter the Power, or you can email. Oh, God. We got right at the end. I got a comment like that. Sometimes I think some people are behind on the live stream and they're, I don't know what happens. You see, Marcus, I think he's still at the point of the live stream from an hour ago. I don't know how anyone could be racist when Marcus Freeman has been the guy that everybody wants in this chat. Like I said a thousand times, anything I said about Corey Raymond today was anything but negative. I said he's the best position coach in the country. But that's not here nor there. Anyway, thank you guys for the support of the channel. Uh, if you want to email me, you can sit and hit me up there. You can hit me up on the social medias. We are so close to hitting 2.5K. Let's get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of the week. It's power. Hour. LSU. Boom. Mickey Facts. Let's go. Low main time. Let's go.